Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 5th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, in Diaries over the weekend, we got the second part for Pascal's diary about how to analyze persistence on OS X or Mac OS. In this case, he goes beyond launch agent. That was his first diary to other things like cron jobs, at and the like uh, in order for an attacker to run commands after the system got infected. So the intent here is to help out people that have to respond to incidents that involve Max and at and cron jobs and like those are features that you may be familiar with if you have dealt with unix before the prior day about launch agents of course is more a mac os specific feature and talking about incident response, we have a second diary from DDA, which talks about an RTF document that used CVE 2017-1188-2. This particular vulnerability was made public about a year ago, and it's the famous equation editor vulnerability. So this has been used quite heavily since then, even though Microsoft did discontinue the equation editor. In his diary, Didier explains how to analyze and exploit taking advantage of this vulnerability and how to figure out what code it's trying to execute. And looks like security researcher Rishi Liang has another remote code exploit in the works for Microsoft Edge. A second researcher, Alexander Kokov, apparently contributed a sandbox escape to this particular exploit. So given this exploit, it is possible to execute arbitrary code on a Windows system. No much, not much details yet, just a tweet announcing that details will be announced shortly. Now, originally it appears that this vulnerability was found on November 1st and may be presented at an upcoming conference or at a pwn to own contest or something the like. Uh, but no fixed release date yet as far as I can tell. Microsoft apparently has not been notified, so this vulnerability will be released without a patch available. And then we got a new vulnerability or yet another vulnerability in modern CPUs. This one affects SMT or simultaneous multi-threading. Simultaneous multi-threading does allow two threads to use one CPU core at the same time. And as you can imagine, what one thread does may affect what another thread sees. So what this particular attack does is it runs a special process on two different cores and then using timing discrepancies in these two processes, it tries to deduct what else is going on in these cores. The researchers discovering this have also released some proof of concept code that can be used to read encryption keys from older versions of OpenSSL. And that's sort of one of the issues here. There are actually some specific countermeasures that processes can take in order to avoid side channel attacks in SMT setups. And Intel essentially says, well, it's really up to the software to protect itself and to protect critical functions like the creation of encryption keys. Apparently, OpenSSL did that right in more recent versions. What makes this attack sort of different from some of the other attacks that we have seen in the past, many of the other attacks use shared cache memory, which isn't the case in this attack. And talking about encryption and encryption algorithms, more efforts are underway to finally get rid of RC4 or ARC4, how it's also called. And one of the targets here is SSH. Now, one of the early RFCs defining SSH was 4253, and it did suggest RC4 as a permitted cipher. And well, but this was more than 10 years ago. A new update to this RFC, actually a newer RFC, if it ever is passed, 
will no longer allow for RC4 support. This could of course be a problem for legacy devices if your device's SSH server still supports only RC4 or other weak ciphers, you may be left with not using SSH at all and maybe falling back to Telnet if your SSH clients no longer support RC4. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.